In this video I want to show you how you can make your own AM transmitter. Why should I build an AM transmitter you may ask? Well, maybe it comes in handy. For example, here in Germany we have these kits. These are AM radio kits. As you can tell by the frequency scale, well there is the switch but don't mind about it. I've modified my radio so I can switch it over and then it can receive shortwave as well. But the original kit only can receive medium wave. Anyway, um, here is the newer version of the kit. They have saved some parts to make it more efficient, to make more money out of it. For example, I took out the meter which tells you the battery voltage and signal strength and yeah, they just made it smaller and took out the meter. But still we have the 505, we have the 550 to 1600 kilohertz in the AM band. In Germany 2015 all AM stations that are official have been shot off. There are some private stations around here but the obvious, uh, the official ones, which were the strong ones with a few kilowatts, uh, I mean a few many kilowatts, uh, were shut off. So pretty much you won't pick up anything with this radio except stations which are not in our uh, uh, mother tongue. Anyway, here is uh, a solution for that. Well, that's the transmitter you're going to see in this video. This is a small AM transmitter, which for example helps you to activate your AM radio kit, bring it back to life and you can broadcast your own music and use your own radio kit. Um, you can also use these old radios that have been produced in the 60s or 70s. For example, a pocket radio which can only pick up AM signals. Then also this transmitter will come in handy and you can broadcast on it. Also, it's a good project for school if you are asked to build an AM transmitter. This is one you can go for. Okay, I'll plug in, uh, I'll turn on my cassette player and we can have a listen to some music via the radio kit. So as you can see, this circuit helps to reactivate this AM receiver, bring it back to life and in the following video you will see how you can build your own small AM station. These are all parts required for building the AM transmitter. You need a 100 nanofarads capacitor which has the code 104, 6 1 nanofarad capacitors which have the code 102, 1, one microfarad capacitor, a 100 ohm resistor which has the color code brown black brown, a 1K resistor with the color code brown, black, red, a 27K resistor with the color code red, purple, orange, and a BC547 or BC548 transistor. Also a 2N3904 will work. But for the 2N3904 you have to place it 180 degrees in the way a BC547 would be placed later in the circuit board. Anyway, you will also need a 9 volt battery clip, solar the spreadboard, 4 meters or 12 feet of wire. It has a diameter of around 1 to 1.5 one millimeters, I mean the inner connection. And you can also use a different wire, but it should be not that thick and it should be at least 4 meters or 12 feet long. An envelope battery is also needed as a, an empty toilet paper roll for winding the coil later. You will also need some. Uh, alligator clips for connecting the audio source and a connector for a headphone jack to RCA connector and as tool you will need scissors. Okay, these are all parts required for building the AM transmitter. Now I want to show you how you can prepare the parts. First take the 1K resistor which has the color code brown, black, red. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to bend both wires in a 90 degree angle from the resistor. So this is how the finished resistor looks. In the next step you're going to cut the wires so that there is 5 mm left on the resistor. Now we have both wires that have been cut from the resistor. Now we just bend the wires. Now the wires have been bent. Round and do the same as you did with the 1K.
now here we have the toilet paper roll and what we are going to do is we are going to make two holes on the bottom of the roll which will later hold the wire. Be careful not to injure yourself. So here you can see both holes in the toilet paper roll. What we are now going to do is we are going to take the wire and feed it through the holes. Therefore we can increase the size of the holes. Now we take the wire and feed it through the hole. Oh by the way, you have to uninsulate the wire. So if you don't have uninsulated wire, you have, of course have to uninsulate it so that the short wires are looking out. So I'll untie the wire. What we are going to do now just look what I'm doing. You can leave this one here around 4 inch long. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wind the wire around the toilet roll so we form a coil. As you can see now the coil is finished. There's still some wire left over which needs to be mounted. Now take the scissors again and make two holes into this toilet paper roll again. One hole which is here. Another one which is here. Now look what I'm doing. So this is the finished core. Before we start completing the transmitter circuit, we have to prepare the transistor as well. Just bend the wires as I showed to you. This is the prepared transistor. There should be four holes from here to here. From the collector to base there should be four holes on the solder the spreadboard. Now let's build the transmitter. The transistor is placed at the right side of the solder the spreadboard and then it's mounted. Just look what I'm doing. This is how the transistor is mounted in the solderless breadboard. Now we take one of the wire bridges that we made and place it here. So this is where one of the wire bridges belongs. Now we take another bridge and place it here. Now I've installed two wire bridges. Now we take another wire bridge and place it here. Here's the other wire bridge installed. This is the last wire bridge installed. So here you can see how all wire bridges are installed in the circuit board. Now we take the 1K resistor with the color code brown, black, red and mount it on the circuit board.
This is where the 1K is mounted. Now we take the 104 capacitor and mount it in the circuit board as well. It's the 100 nanofarad capacitor. This is where the 104 gets mounted. Now we take the 100 ohm resistor and mount it in the circuit board as well. So this is where the 100 ohm resistor gets mounted. You can see it. Okay. Now we take the 27K resistor and mount it on the circuit board as well. Therefore we bend it. So you have to bend it like that, it's not so critical. And then you mount it from here to here. So this is where the 27K belongs. You can see it, it's here and it's here on plus. Next part we are going to take are all of these 102 capacitors. Lots of lots of lots of them. Now we are going to take them and install them. The first 102 goes from here to here. The second 102 goes from here to here. The third 102 goes from here to here. Now we take the other 102s and place them as well. One is not straight. Yes, you can see it goes from here to here. So I'll show you. One goes from here to here. And just place them as you see it. So these are all 102 capacitors installed. Just look here. You can see there is one hole open and then three capacitors and there is on the other side one hole open and then three capacitors as you can see on the video. The next part we are going to take is the one microfarad capacitor. We just place it from here to here. Just place it somewhere here where is an open connection. Okay, that's pretty much what you need to do. Now all parts are installed except the 9 volt battery clip and the coil. I'll show you how you can mount these. So as you can see I've now connected the 9 volt battery clip. The black wire is on the lower side and the red wire is on top. So this is pretty much what you're going to do with this 9 volt battery clip. Now for installing the coil. The coil is placed on a special position. The coil is placed with one wire here on this hole and with the other wire on the hole on the other side. I'll just show you. Here you can see how the coil has been mounted on the solderless breadboard. Now I have pulled the transmitter and it's already set up and it's transmitting. Or it should. I've connected the audio source with one connection on the 1NF capacitors or the 102s and the other one on the 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Also I've connected my battery to the device, so now it should work. On the other side you can see that on the RCA connector I've connected my ligator clips. The inner connection goes to the 1 microfarad and the outer connection goes to the 1 nanofarads. I've adjusted my Walkman on an average volume, not on the maximum volume but also not on the lowest, just on an average volume. It should work. Now we're going to search the station on the radio. Therefore I've set it to MW, which means medium wave, and I've tuned it to the lowest spot in the AM band. The transmitter should be around in the middle of the AM band and you will find it if there is a certain spot in the radio. So I turn on the radio, you will hear static, but as soon as I find the AM station, the static will disappear. There we are, as you can see, now I've tuned my radio to the AM station, now I'm going to turn on my cassette player and we should hear the music through the radio.